Hi all, welcome back. And in today's video, we're going to be making a, another version of the C2B cider style and making a blueberry lemon cider. So blueberry lemon cider, if you want to see specifics of the C2B cider style cider with added fruit, uh, please check out this video on pineapple cider. Uh, it covers all the basics of that and also covers general thought process behind recipe building. There will be a little bit in this video, but not as much in that one. This one's more of a, a follow up because I wanted to do a video uh, based off of what you should do if you aren't able to back sweeten with something that has juice. So for instance, these blueberries um, come in frozen variety. They also come fresh, as you may be aware, in the supermarket. Um, but blueberries, they don't really make blueberry juice. So what we're going to be doing in the second half of this video is going to be showing you how to make uh, kind of a, a blueberry um, maceration and get all that juice out of those blueberries uh, so that you can have a, a blueberry sweetened back sweetened drink, as well as using some apple juice concentrate too, because, well, it's easy. This recipe calls for five gallons of filtered apple juice. Uh, if you don't have access to filtered apple juice, uh, unfiltered is fine, just you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer. Uh, we're going to be having two large lemons. If you do not have large lemons in your, your supermarket, uh, four regular sized lemons would be fine. And we're going to be juicing and peeling these. And of course, uh, our operative ingredient for this would be our blueberries. We're going to be using five pounds of blueberries. Uh, generally speaking, when I'm doing a cider that I don't have a juice for, I like to use one pound of fresh fruit or frozen fruit per uh, gallon of liquid. So I'm going to be using uh, five gallons of uh, apple juice. So we're going to be using five pounds of blueberries. Uh, we're going to have a nutrient addition of fermato. And we're going to be using some powdered white wine tannin. I'm using white wine tannin, but red wine tannin would be fine for this as well. 20 grams of powdered wine tannin will get us to about uh, two and a half uh, grams per uh, liter of tannin content combined with the blueberries. So that is our target number for a nice, good, round, even mouthfeel uh, and lingering taste from our cider. Also, the last bit is our yeast selection is going to be Premier Blanc. Um, you could use Premier Blanc, uh, Premier Cote de Blanc from Red Star as well. They're both are going to be uh, sort of similar flavor profile. Cote de Blanc has more of that uh, kind of fruity, um, fruity notes to it than the Premier Blanc. This kind of is more dry notes. Uh, but the other possible addition would be something like an Essafail SO4 or using uh, a Saf Cider AC4 to create a nice, so both of those do nice crisp uh, flavor so you can really let the ingredients that we have in it shine. So two options, either you're going to go for something that's fruit forward and kind of a white wine yeast, or you're going to go for something that's dry and crisp so that it produces a nice, nice uh, clean uh, flavor. If you watch the pineapple video, um, pineapple cider video, I did a soak of the citrus skins inside vodka in order to sterilize them. I'm going to be doing a different approach this time, which is going to be placing them in a water bath with the nutrients. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and hit them, hit it in the microwave for about uh, a minute and a half so that the, the liquid is boiling and that's going to sanitize these skins too. I wanted to do two versions of the uh, C2B style. One with um, using a pressurized ferment and something that is a little bit more challenging and then something using a non-pressurized ferment that's a little bit easier. Uh, in addition, a little bit of thought process here. Uh, Fermato, we're only using 20 grams of Fermato this time. Uh, and we're not using any DAP. So the idea is that I want a nice slow fermentation so that I don't lose all that blueberry smell outside of the cider while it is fermenting. So nice, nice low and slow. I'm uh, gonna try and keep the temperature about 65 degrees while this ferments. I did forget one pretty crucial ingredient and that is pectic enzyme. Uh, we're gonna be adding 30 grams of pectic enzyme or two tablespoons that uh, that's going to go directly into our uh, fermenter once we add all of our other ingredients. So, all right, adding those lemon peel to our uh, set of nutrients over here. And going to go ahead and chop our lemons in half. And actually going to quarter these ones. These ones are big boas, so we're going to quarter them. We're going to go ahead and set our yummy yeast food and acid slurry aside over here for the time being until we're ready to pour that in. And we're going to go ahead and add our blueberries now. As you can tell, this keg or this uh, fermenter has been sanitized. Got our wonderful layer of foam on the bottom from our star sand. As they say, don't fear the foam for star sand. 
And we're just gonna do a direct addition of blueberries. So I had mentioned earlier some specific tannin numbers that we're shooting for. We're shooting for about two and a half grams of tannin per liter. Um, it's pretty difficult to know exactly how much tannins inside the juice, uh, but stuff like blueberries, they have uh, scientific studies to show uh, that measure the number of tannin content inside of it. And blueberries are about 160 uh, milligrams of tannin um, per 100 grams. So we can do some calculations and get rough ballpark of what we're, what we're adding to here. We're not gonna get a complete tannin extraction, that's kind of Un, not really possible, but we're going to get an estimate one. So, bag two of blueberries. The reason why we're using frozen blueberries instead of fresh blueberries is because uh, they're picked at the peak of freshness, and also the cell walls get exploded. I think that's liced, liced, um, whenever they're frozen. So that uh, allows them to be extracted easier. So, uh, frozen blueberries are typically better than fresh blueberries. <laughs> Our nutrient and acid slurry just got done inside the microwave, so I'm gonna go ahead and dump it right in. Be careful, it is hot! Ooh. There we go, let me get those last little lemon peels in there. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe off the outside of this because it has some nutrients on the outside of it. All right, so what we're gonna do is gonna add a couple gallons of our juice and our pectic enzyme, get everything all mixed up in there, get a bunch of oxygen, and then pitch our yeast, mix it up, and then pitch the rest of our apple juice. And blueberries are natural antioxidants, so we want to make sure we get lots of oxygen in here because we do not want a reductive environment because that gives us uh, potential of getting a, uh, a hydrogen sulfide fault inside of our cider, which can smell bad. So we want to make sure we add plenty of oxygen in here. While this bad boy is uh, a little bit lighter than he's going to be, uh, we're going to go ahead and give him a nice good shake up to get this nice and oxygenated. And oxygenate some more. How much do you oxygenate? As much as you feel comfortable with. And then a little bit more. All right, once again, take the thumb off quickly, uh, off slowly. Okay, and then one more time, because getting tired of mixing this around. All right. Uh, yeast manufacturers, please make these so you can rip them open. Just sprinkle it on top. Lots of oxygen in that must. That looks really nice. Sprinkle our pectic enzyme in there. 30 grams of pectic enzyme. And then adding the rest of our yeast. And then adding the rest of our juice. We already added our yeast. That'd be silly to add more yeast. Have like a yeast thunderdome. Foaming is good when you're pouring uh, in this phase of cider making because foaming means you are oxygenating. And oxygen is good for the early stages of yeast development. There we go. Let's go ahead and add our airlock. And there we go. We're done. We're going to set this aside for a couple of weeks. Uh, make sure you clean up your mess, you know, good housekeeping, clean as you go. and. Uh, one final thing of housekeeping before uh, we conclude this uh, this portion of the video is I didn't take any specific gravity readings for the first phase uh, pre-fermentation because quite honestly they're going to be inaccurate. Uh, the unless we did a like a jam or making a fruit puree that would actually release the sugars into here, the sugars from the blueberries are going to be released over time. So what I've done is I've calculated the amount of blue sugars per uh, five pounds of blueberries and then made that reference number for our specific gravity. Uh, I'll put the number right here. Uh, also, uh, see the spreadsheet linked below that has all the calculations that'll be used with this video as well as all the ingredients used. So, uh, I don't typically take uh, initial gravity readings for anything that I use fresh fruit for. It's just kind of irrelevant. It's going to be, it's going to be inaccurate. So, uh, we take final gravity readings to make sure our fermentation is stopped. With that, uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks.